picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. God bless you, Freeman. You're a hell of an American. Welcome back, everybody. It's the start of another busy week around here. Um, not only does this quarantine have us all staying at home, but apparently it has us all staying at home building models, which is good. Building models is a good thing. Uh, but it makes very busy work for me because uh, another order has come in that I need to jump upon and take care of. Which means I'll be splitting my attentions between uh, a project I've been really wanting to get a hold of and filling an order. Uh, the project is so big, it is so expensive, it is that will take up so much room that I cannot um, work on it all on my table all at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first... Uh, run the camera out to the living room to show you all the parts splayed out and then we will come back in here and start uh, digging into it and this my friends is it this is what I've been teasing for the last couple of weeks it is the hunk of junk models uh, Valley Forge it is I don't even know offhand what the scale of it is but I know it will be 49 inches 50 inches long when it is finished and uh, what a glorious project it's going to be. There is, uh, as you can see, a big old bundle here of brass rod that's going to make up all of the uh, trusses. Some beautifully, and I mean beautifully printed, 3D printed, what he calls rapid prototyping, but that's just a fancy name for 3D printed uh, girder pieces and uh, structures. Uh, what's going to allow me a chance for just for all kinds of fun are the domes. Uh, they're obviously the six domes. They will have six different little uh, um, landscape features inside. That's going to be fun. That's kind of got to kind of be its own project, is doing the landscaping inside there. This is all the grid work. Like I said, these are the parts that go inside the grids. The framework, uh, that's the stand, although I believe we're not going to be using the stand as, this, as the, uh, the client wants to hang this. So, um, which I think may be a better idea, although with as heavy as this thing is, I mean, this is huge. Ugh, that's tough to pick up with one hand. Um, as heavy as that is, I would not recommend anything less than fishing line, strong cable, maybe even uh, metal wire to hang that. That is, that's going to be a beast. Um, but I think the best way to avoid it I don't know because I won't, won't know until the whole thing is done. It's going to be to hang it from several points. This is going to have the same issue that the Discovery has and that it is a long skinny thing with this really heavy bit in the center and keeping it, uh, keeping it level and straight and keeping it from bowing is going to be the important thing. Now these, these uh, brass tubes are going to go a long way to stabilizing it. But I think it's going to it's going to pr uh, present its own unique issues when it comes to how to properly display it. Okay, let's uh, continue on our meet the parts episode of the Valley Forge. This is Valley Forge episode one. Meet the parts. Get to get to know them. Uh, this is your typical dome. This is your typical dome. Uh, there is a three sided jig that the uh, and if you've ever done a three sided jig anyway this is a three sided jig um connector point slides into there um one of the things that sold me on even taking on this this kit was in well, well let's start with this this is the laser cut floor that goes in and it's got a matching uh trail this is the trail that the uh dune buggies would be running around the sidewalks or the little roads or whatever and each one of these domes would be a different biosphere so uh, I don't have the list in front of me I think this is the desert I'm, I think it might be the desert one which means I will put different sand colors and thing in here like I said the uh, the um, landscaping of these is going to be it's it's kind of its own project but the nice thing about it is I don't have to do it in place I can do it all on this disc, put this down, and then plop it into the plop it into the dome piece at the last uh, as a last step. These are nicely detailed. They've got some acrylic uh, acrylic balls that need to go in these two sizes of uh, openings here, and I think I may go ahead and do that first because those 
little acrylic balls uh, could get lost easily and it's an easy bit of construction that I can go and do and take care of and then I don't have to worry about losing those pieces. But one of the things that sold me on doing this kit at all was going to be how well are these domes done because it's 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 the one thing it's, it's every kit has the one thing and if the one thing isn't done right the rest of the kit looks like well it doesn't look like crap but I mean it uh, it um, it, it kind of rises and falls on the one thing and the one thing you remember about the Valley Forge are the domes but what uh, hunk of junk has done and this is Tony Lamb's hunk of junk I may not have said that the hunk of junk kit uh, is that the pattern for the lattice work is screen printed onto the plastic before it is uh, before it is vacuum formed let me show you what that looks like here is a non a non trimmed dome so you can see that the pattern is I get that behind there maybe get a white piece of paper behind it there you go that'll help so you can see the dome pattern is screen printed on there before it's even vacuum formed so that when they pull it down it amazingly still has that perfect pattern going on and really like I said this is one of the things that sold me on even doing it because if those weren't going to look good then what's the sense of it and this is the other thing that sold me on it was look at how beautiful these uh, girder pattern these girder pieces are and the tight 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 so tight you wouldn't believe it engineering on the engineering tolerances on this thing are marvelous now it recommends all the instructions recommend not to paint this until it's all put together and I can tell you why it's because there's not room in this thing for paint but these things slide together so unbelievable well, let's see if I can do this there you go so unbelievably smoothly if I give it a little twist as I'm putting it through they are not loose they are not the worst thing in the world would be it would be is if this was just you know a very loosely put together thing but this is beautiful and this is going to help all of these brass rods are going to help stabilize this kit like nobody's business or stabilize the back the backbone of this thing okay this is the central body this is where the bridge is right there is where Freeman Lowell's tiny tiny window sorry right there is where Freeman Lowell's tiny tiny window is um, but this fits on like this uh, but you can see it's got these wonderful channels here that are the same size as these brass rods and they will fit in uh, like this and lend all kinds of stability and once again this gets painted white and pretty much white and more white on it with a little bit of white on the sides uh, the and these rods will be that that uh, brick red so it's going to be quite the contrast um, what's what's really going to help in the uh, stability of the whole Megillah is that these holes that are set in the center for the uh, frameworks are so expertly uh, drilled or cast into this big hunk of resin and if I say it once I'll say it a million times this thing is heavy this has got to be at least uh, let's see uh, gauging it just as an estimate five pounds uh, seven pounds maybe more of solid resin and all of the pipes this is the bigger pipe that goes through the center this is tubing this is tubing you'll hear me uh, and I got on uh, I got on Tony's case about this all of these brass pieces are tubes tubes are hollow rods are solid he calls them rods in the instructions he vacillates between ro calling them rods and tubes they are all tubes because they are hollow but as you can see by the time you put all of these through here that's what's going to feed your stability and um, uh, there are there are four of them that go through plus all of these ones that lay on the top 
so that by the time we're done with all of that it's going to be solid as the day is long here's a small sample give you an idea of what these things are going to kind of look like together now these are have no idea how close or how far away from each other these are going to end up being I imagine it's something like that but that'll give you an idea of the uh, the yeah they're off like that at an angle but that'll give you an idea of the scale of the uh, pods or the the domes at least it'll give you a sort of an idea about how the how the frameworks relate to the the main section and this is just to show you the commitment to detail on this kit that is a piece of girder work that is about two inches long that piece of girder work is three-sided it is laser or is um, 3d printed it is very very delicate and it goes right between here and here those are the two sides of the bridge by the time you move this into actual place, it goes between there and there. See if I can zoom in on that. Oops. Yeah, that's that's the uh, like I said, that's the commitment to detail on this kit. Okay, like I said, I was going to take care of these little acrylic do uh, balls first since. Uh, it's, it's an easy build. I can do it now and I don't have to worry about keeping track of all of them But this will give you an indication of what the instructions kind of look like um, It's a the CG or it's the uh, CG it's the computer graphic version of the part and it's got um, uh, Whatever the new instruction for this particular set of instructions or this new sheet is done in a color so I can tell from this that I need to put six of the big uh, domes on and four of the smaller or six of the big balls on and four of the smaller ones on for this particular step and all of the sub assemblies for the Valley Forge are broken down by um, like bridge and center parts bridge antenna center body core parts decals forward frame assembly forward radar fuel storage pipe locations rear frame assembly rear radar superstructure so this will give you an idea of of uh, how to label them you find the parts and you say okay this is frame number one you look you find the one that matches it and then you put that next to frame number two and you eventually build your frame all the way out in the first four sections build the forward frame and then the last of it build the second uh, the, the rear frame but that's how it's all put together very well thought out but without these instructions and without them being in color um, you really can get lost in the weeds pretty quickly so I'm gonna go ahead and take this bit of instruction and uh, follow it for all six domes okay if you can see the little dots of sharpie I've put on this it'll tell you where the uh, balls go the big ones go one two three one two three I thought the small ones went here so glad to read the instructions. No, they go here and here and here and here. So uh, let's get balling. Okay, I've got all the little acrylic spheres down, which was half BB game and half uh, teeing up the world's tiniest golf balls on the world's tiniest golf tees because there are little stands that are uh, met, or there, there are little uh, raised pedestals that have an indent or a curve on the top of it like a top of a golf tee and uh, those are where you rest the, the little balls and there are just enough for the ones you need there are three I mean there are six big ones and four small ones per dome and Tony does not provide any extras which is you know kind of a shame I mean they're they're obviously bought from a craft store they're not cast I mean they're they're not they're not resin cast they're not printed they're something that you could probably buy in bulk uh, and you know really could have duped a couple extra each size just in case you lose one I didn't but you know I could see where it wouldn't kill you to include a couple extras 
uh, but they're all down and they're all in place and I can put those aside now and that cleans everything out of that bag with the exception of these which are supposed to be uh, joints for the um, uh, for the tubes now, I gotta tell you I'll, I'll go ahead and, and spoil the surprise they don't work they are too big to fit in the inside these these brass tubes that have been sourced for this kit have remarkably thick walls which is great it's fantastic it's really going to lend a lot of support but these little plugs uh i don't know where these were sourced from but they are meant to like go in the side of one and then you sorry hit the, hit the, and then you hit the light and then join them together like that well they are too big around they don't fit inside there so I'm going to get a smaller length of tube or a skinnier length of tube and cut my own to make that work and this one is this bigger one is meant to go in the the main spinal column and it is too too thick to go in there as well so this was a nice effort I understand why why uh, you wanted to include them but there are no they are no bueno so I will put those aside and I will substitute when the time comes I will substitute uh, different metal parts for that purpose okay we're ready to start cutting some metal I think the forward frame the forward uh, rod the center rod the 5 16th rod that goes up to the center needs to be 22 inches long they all come 24 inches long, so everything cuts off of that. Um, you know the old saying, measure once, cut twice. Uh, I'm going to put a independent ruler against it. I was going to use this cutting mat as a guide, but I all of a sudden don't trust it. So let me verify with an actual metal ruler. And then I will mark this rod no, I'm not going to mark the rod. I'm going to mark the tube. It is not a rod at 22 inches. And then I will prepare to cut it off with the Dremel with a cutting uh, disc on it. Okay, I don't mind telling you. I'm shocked myself. This is not a bad day's work. Um, I just test fitted into the, uh, into the base there to make sure everything's fitting. But right now... Uh, I've got the whole front neck not glued but uh, in position none of these bits in the uh, center rod are glued but uh, boy I gotta tell you uh, yeah that was some work alrighty now you can see just the neck part that I've got done or the the scaffolding part move this out of the way so you can see it um, this is the forward this is the forward uh, section it goes to here and then the first set of domes go on this again has not been glued down on the post I need to do that once I get once I get myself sure of all of my measurements then I will go ahead and glue that down this ball right here this twisting end here you see that that needs to be in this I need to make sure that I'm measuring right that it where it uh, where this post actually starts does it start here does it start up here I think it starts there and then I can glue all of the supports on the inside in but uh, what I want to do now and and then call it a day because boy howdy it's been a day um, is to cut the six pieces that go on the inside so i uh, get the uh, measuring device out and the Dremel and we'll get to cutting. Okay, this is no small amount of work, but this is where we're going to stop for today. Can't believe I got this much done in one day. Um, this, again, is not glued into the body, but I'm using the body because it's holding all of these... Uh, it's holding all of the uh, beams or all of the brass tubes in the correct orientation. So the only thing left to do now, I've been going through and tacking the uh, these stanchions. I've been tacking those on the center uh, pole, but I have not glued the center pole in place. It's still uh, 
twists and all of that. So uh, the last thing to do would be to start gluing all of these to the brass. Welcome back everybody. It is Tuesday, day two on the Valley Forge. And we're going to get a lot more done today. I was surprised. I was frankly astounded by uh, the, how much I got done yesterday. It was one of those just beautiful modeling days where you just go through and things are working out and the pieces are fit, fitting together and there's not a lot of hair pulling. And you look up and next thing you know, you've spent the whole day on it. But it was great. I got a lot done and it taught me a lot for today as well. Uh, this is what we got done yesterday. This is the forward boom. Uh, it is ready to have all of the joints kind of locked down and glued. They're all on here. They're, they're in place, but they have not been uh, glued to the respective brass rails. And that's something I could do pretty easily this morning. Um, but... Not gonna, not gonna, not quite yet. I'm not quite ready to commit to uh, locking all of these down for right now. Um, I am starting on the rear boom today. And the rear boom, um, looking at the instructions, they tell you to address it a little bit differently than the front boom. The rear boom, they actually want you to start painting the parts before you assemble the boom. That was something they said was a no-no for the front boom. Don't paint anything. Don't paint. They kept, they kept harping about don't paint anything. Um, so, I went ahead and I took out some Hull Red. This is, uh, I used it as a primer. And it's a very, very good color to prime the girder work here. And see, the compressor agrees. Uh, what I did is I, um, how well you can see that. Let me put it up here. Um, this is a bear to paint, and because you're trying to get in and around every little stinking thing, I almost wish I had a vat. I could just dunk this in and then pull it out, but then what, that would lay the paint on too uh, too heavy. Plus, it would get, really get it inside the rings that you you want to sh shy away from getting any paint inside the rings because, uh, as I've said before, the tolerances on this are so tight that if you do that, you run the risk of the uh, of the brass not fitting in there anymore because of that so uh, I've been very careful when I was uh, painting to avoid that I've also gone ahead and painted up the fuel modules because they ask you to do that at this point as well uh, the fuel modules they uh, they get built into the framework as we're putting it in place and then we snake the uh, central uh, the central shaft up through it when we're done we actually start with the outside frame, get it all done, and then we snake this up through. But we have to kind of cut this open in a couple of spots so that we can put the fuel balls, the fuel cells in there. It is a Rubik's Cube of a thing, and I, uh, um, I can't wait to see how well it goes. I've got, before, before we put these in, obviously, they want you to paint them. So we're going to see how well that's going to go. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's, it's, it's not the same methodology as yesterday. So we're going to see how well it goes. Uh, I think what I want to do on these balls, I'm going to cut some, uh, triangle masks for these facets here. Once I paint these, the, uh, the brighter color, I'm going to mask these outer facets and then paint white over top of the all the whole thing because these are basically red with white trim. It's, it's going to be fun to see how easily those are going to uh, paint. But uh, that's today's that's today's agenda is and I may even want to get a coat of primer on this thing. But I'm going to see if while waiting for things to dry. If I can make myself happy with my final positioning on all of this, can I douse this thing in primer? I don't know, for, exact, for example, how the brass is going to take the primer. That's going to be an interesting thing. Is it going to scratch if I go straight to me a hall red on this? Or do I need to 
hit this with a gray primer first. The glorious thing about this is I don't have to worry about the insides of these uh, uh, frames because they're already taken care of. They're already uh, jointed to the brass rods, so I don't need it. I, I, mean, I don't need to worry about it. Uh, the other big news is I uh, emailed Tony back and forth about this kit, and uh, he answered one important question for me. Hold on. Now, this is where I come off looking like a complete imbecile, but it's only half my fault. These are the domes, and I commented to, uh, uh, to Tony, I said, uh, the domes are blue. What gives? And he goes, oh, no, the domes aren't blue. There's a blue liner on them. The domes are actually clear. And wouldn't you know, the domes are clear. I told him I felt like a complete fool, and I would built it completely up that way, not with, if he hadn't told me. And uh, it was nowhere mentioned in any of the instructions that there was a blue uh, liner on that. I thought that was the blue, um, that they used a blue PETG to make those. So, that's why they call me dummy. But that's what it looks like with, uh, with the blue liner removed. And yesterday, you'll remember, I put all these uh, fancy balls on it. So, uh, this, these, are, these bottoms are ready to be primed. That was, that was uh, the first bit of news. And of course, the second bit of news, I think you all saw coming uh, immediately. Is that yes, I'm getting myself one of these kits. Uh, there, Tony says he's got a couple left. He's got a few left. He can't get to them right away because they are in a different location that he is quarantined away from. But as soon as he can get over to that warehouse, he will uh, pull out one and get it shipped. And I knew it was going to happen. Now I've got to I've got to find a place to put it. And because it is so danged heavy, I've got to find a place to put it that is substantial. So thanks for that, Dave. Thanks for that. Um, so now I have got to. Uh, make some sense out of this and I will take everything that I learn on this and apply it to my own build when that happens. Okay, pardon the plotter in the background, but I just took a running stab at this to see how possible it's going to be to get paint in around everything and it looks like it will be. I'm just going to need a lot more of it so uh, I'm going to have to run out and get some paint. I don't know how feasible that is given the current situation, but we'll find out. Okay, I just experimented on a couple different sizes of triangle masks so that I can uh, uh, mask these uh, fuel cell balls and uh, paint the white framework around them. So that's going to work out nicely, I think. And uh, I can get on with the rest of the detail work. Well, uh, back from lunch, such as it was, you can take your uh, apocalypses as they come but as long as Bojangles is still making chicken um, it can't be that bad so uh, today not going nearly as smoothly as yesterday uh, did take time to get that stuff painted this morning but the uh, the methodology for putting these ones on is uh, not nearly as good as it could have been what they suggested was to glue the back one on and then fit this all slide this one all the way down that's not so good uh, I would much rather have started in the center maybe moved out from both sides because that was a long stretch to slide that one down well huzzahs and handsprings we have the we have the rear and I went ahead and put the uh, the rear antenna on because um, it took actually it took the pressure off of these delicate tips here. I was afraid of bashing those against something. So by putting the actual antenna assembly on there, it uh, gave me a stable end to the whole thing. But you can see it slides up into the ship. Everything meets up like it's supposed to. There's a gap right there, which is covered by this, uh, this little heart of mine. Actually, it, co it gets covered up by that joint right there. And then this goes all the way out 
to the uh, tip of the domes and the domes fit on something like that. Hi, that was tedious, but I've got all of the uh, 20 sided die here. I've got all of the faces of this masked off and I'm ready to give these a good spraying of white and as well as these two parts here which are supposed to be white. I probably should go throw a coat of a primer on those first though. Okay, we're going to finish out the day putting down some white paintage. So let's first take these uh, bits of oh, the central shaft. Give them a good whitening. Only the uh, front or the front leading edge of the boom and the trailing edge of the boom are supposed to be white. And then the, <coughs> the central spikes that lead out to the domes are white. But everything else is that reddish color. So these are the only bits that really stand out. Now, here's the important part. We're going to get to these fuel cell balls. And I've got them portioned out here on the old Lazy Susan. And um, I'm going to hit the, hit the high spot, see what I can see, and then flip them over and do the bottoms. I wanted to make sure the paint was fairly thick because I didn't want to chance it running underneath the mask. I don't want anything too runny or too uh, liquidy. Good morning folks, welcome back. It is Wednesday. We're back on the tail section of the Valley Forge today. And before, uh, before I turned the cameras on this morning, I went ahead and put some uh, paint on this tailpiece right here also slid some more of these uh, frame pieces in I got the all three on the bottom and I gotta tell you no mean treat uh, no mean uh, uh, feet there it was a bit of a hassle to try to get those in I don't know if I am a hundred percent on board with this whole um, put the lat put the back piece on and then fish everything through it is going to make things a bit difficult and it's going to be particularly fun when time comes to uh fit these balls in well the balls will fit in fine and that's what we're going to do now but the problem is going to come when it comes to painting around them and i'm really thinking now that what i might want to do is uh try to paint some in here and hit the spots before I try putting these balls in because once I get them in it ain't gonna be no big treat to try to paint around them so um, I've done as much with the pipe work that I can before I really need to get those balls in because if I put too many more of the pipes in and I've only got two more to go in that's they're 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 basically meant to trap the balls in place okay well this is tedious um, taking the masks off of the uh, fuel cell turned out to be only step one in a much more elaborate thing because yes I did have to go back and touch up a lot of paint I wasn't expecting that this would be a magic bullet but that it would cut the amount of painting down significantly uh, what I've also done was taking this, uh, the, uh, the fire red, Vallejo fire red, um, watering it down or making a wash out of it and then putting it in these areas here that weren't masked. Thank you, Mr. Compressor, uh, that weren't masked and, uh, then touching that up and a lesson learned from the Babylon 5 build from last week. So goes to prove that no uh no build is is completely uh without merit uh it did put me in a mind to trying the white liquitex 
because I needed a thick, very opaque white um, that I could lay down easily without it getting runny. And uh, that's what I've been using to touch up around the edges. Okay, I'm running into roadblock after roadblock here. And as anybody who knows me will tell you, I am a person who will work a week to save a day. And uh, these little balls here are driving me absolutely up the wall. Um, every time I put the tape on it, the templates on it, they don't, they uh, peel up the paint. I've tried uh, painting everything red and then masking it and then painting white. Got mixed results when I took the masks off. So now I have covered up the white with uh, strips of uh, vinyl and I'm going to try to paint them red again. And if and then take them uh, and then take the masks off and uh, see how well the white turns out. If that doesn't work, I'm going to re have to resort to hand painting these, and um, which is something you know. If I'd have started yesterday, I mean, probably you would be done with by now. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we're going to see how that goes. But uh, uh, these things are giving me of all the stuff that I thought was going to be a problem, the simple painting of these balls was not that thing. Well, obviously this was the answer. I should have done this to begin with. This is a much cleaner, much better result. I still have some touch up to do, but that's that's eminently livable compared to how some of the others look. So uh, now I'm just going to strip all of these masks off of all of these and uh, redo them with these thin lines and repaint. See, I saved myself a lot of time in the long run by taking care of this thing, uh, even though I had, even though I had to back up and 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 go again, it still uh, saved me time in the long run. Good morning, welcome back. It is Thursday, and work continues on the Valley Forge. Um, cleaned everything off of the table that wasn't these fuel balls because that is what I want to do today, and everything else was merely. Posing a distraction to me. Uh, I will tell you the good news is today that I think I have come up with my formula for the rust uh, orange color of the framework and it's equal parts orange red and hull red. And it gives me a color like this. Now I've just painted this over the primer part that I did yesterday and I think it's giving me the color, the exact color that I want. Uh, the the uh, hull red by itself was was not warm enough. It was too, and I was planning on using it just as a shadow and putting something over top of it. But I, it looks like I'm going to be able to get in there with the uh, top color and get to just about every place. It's going to take some time to do it, but. Um, uh, I think it'll work and going over this light gray primer gives me the right balance and body so uh, I think that's gonna work okay I've been working all morning well not all morning it seems like I've been working all morning it's taken a good amount of time uh, this fiddly particular tedious work but I'm down to the last fuel cell and it's a question of taking these very thin uh, strips that I have plotted and this works so well in rehearsal but as soon as I turn the camera on there you go um, and it's just a question of taking one of them lining it up over the centers of the uh, faces here the facets and then just wrapping it around so that it protects the white that is between all of these colored triangles. Okay, my balls are painted. My balls are painted. I'm sorry. I'm going a little bit stir crazy. Uh, but the balls are painted. I <laughs> excuse me. Uh, they're all painted. The fuel cells are painted. The fuel cells are painted. I'm gonna let those dry. A good long while before I go ahead and pull the uh, tape back off of them. 
I may even put a second coat on them. Maybe, maybe even a second coat on them before I go and uh, take that off. But I did spit out, since I'm mixing in the cup, um, and like I said, I've come up with my, uh, with my recipe, one to one to one on these three colors, red, orange, and whole red. Um, I need to go out and get some more red and orange, and I'm hoping that the local hobby shop slash mower place has it. Red, no problem. Sometimes they don't. They'll have the clear orange, but they won't have the regular orange. So I'm gonna gonna uh, hope that they have that. But I did use what I had left in the cup to really start working on this forward uh, uh, girder system. And yeah. Better, try, better to not try to get it all covered at one time because it's never going to happen and you're going to end up glopping. But um, I can take the time and then flip it and then do a little bit more. But you still have to kind of get in and around all of this detail. And it is not, it's not easy. It's not fun. But it's got to be done. See, I made a rhyme. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's happening. It's all happening. It's just taking its sweet time. I feel like I should have a degree in surgery at this point. I've broken this thing's spine so many times and then reattached it. It is uh, no longer humorous. Okay, I'm just finishing up the last of the uh, fuel balls, taking the, taking the uh, yellow tape off of them. But one last piece here to show you the dramatic reveal. Dun, dun, dun. And now I just need to go through and do all the white touching up. Certainly a lot easier to do this and to do the little bit of white touching up than to try to paint all of those white lines uh, consistently with a brush. Well, I've touched the white up on these balls and I think I've done as much good as I can because, you know, it's all going to be useless if I end up getting scratched up putting them in the, in the frame. So... I'm thinking I'm going to leave them for now and uh, anything that happens when I put them in the frames I will touch up once they're in place but I can't really uh, no sense investing a lot of time in getting them painted out here only if they're going to get covered up again so I'm going to let those dry um, it's Thursday let's see i got one more day this week what can I get done this week maybe I can get the uh frame painted and get these set in tomorrow that would be a good goal okay so uh, for the last job for this evening I want to get a good coating of the girder color on the two girder sections got the towel all laid out here I've mixed up an entire jar of my special girder color brand or girder color mixture pattern recipe and uh, what I want to do is uh, simply spray on as much as humanly possible without glopping. So let's fill up the brush and start the spraying. Okay, the uh, the front girders have gotten a really good coat of the of the girder color, and I'm just going in and around and trying to catch all of the side angles and all of the areas where you where the where the post will block you from getting a straight spray so you have to attack it from a million different angles to get the paint where you want it to go this is a beautiful uh, girder color particularly for unders I think what I'm going to do after all this said and done but before I do the final assembly is I may um, hit it with a light coat of red just to bring the red up a tiny bit but this is a beautiful industrial terracotta color right now okay i've stuffed little wads of paper rolled up paper into the uh, tube holes here and uh, that will keep the paint from getting to the inside you might think that's overkill i think it's just kill enough so let's get some spray on this back superstructure.
Okay, I'm just finishing up the coat of the girder color on the rear section O girders. I've used about half of what I've mixed up, but I've got a really good coat on both the front and the back for that. Um, there is one more uh, tube, I think I've mentioned, that needs to go in here that has not been painted at all yet, and that is a stark brass color. Now, the only problem with this, if I paint it, it will then be too thick to show up through the uh, rings here, so I'm going to have to put it in place and then paint it in place, which means masking or, you know, or putting a card around where the balls are so that I don't get any overspill. I think that is the most prudent way to handle it. And then I can attach the outer balls and then the, the other core elements. But uh, I think we're in a good, healthy place tonight to let this rest. And uh, so all I need to do now is wash out the brush and uh, have a cold beverage. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, and you know what that means. Not as much as it used to. <laughs> uh, it's the last work day of the week, and it is the last work day of the week for the uh, first week of the Valley Forge. Um, this thing is a Rubik's Cube wrapped inside of another type of puzzle surrounded by a third type of a puzzle. I'm too tired to even come up with a good analogy right now. Uh, trying to get the parts inside the frame, and it's not that I've built myself into a, a box. It's, it's, this is the prescribed method, uh, and I still have one rod left to go. Uh, it's a question of getting these guys popped inside the framework, and then lining them up with a central shaft that goes up through the center. And I have to think, I mean, as brilliant as these uh, printed pieces are, these 3D pe printed pieces of girder, as brilliant as they are and as wonderfully as they have been engineered, I'm wondering if Tony couldn't have done modelers a favor by making them less complete. And by less complete, I mean he prints it, and then he, you get instructions to, to, uh, to break a connection and then re-glue it after you have put the ball inside. It's like you were supposed to cut this joint right here and then put the ball inside and then rejoin it. And I'm wondering if, if he had just not printed the pieces so intricately or printed them in smaller sections then it would have been easier, to, I think, to get inside and build it, build the parts, and then put them back together, rather than having to break them apart in the first place. That's that's the long and short of it after doing all of the uh, staring and quizzing myself as to how all these things are going to fit together. I still think it would have been easier to make the front and back sections. The front section went together pretty easily. This back section, getting all of these balls in, and there's not real, not that there's any real weight out here. I can understand making the front section really one piece and strong because you have the dome sitting out front. But here, there's really no weight. So making this into two smaller sections, I think would have served the model maker a lot better. Um, but that's my soap up my soap box and that's what happens when you give me too much time to think about something it's not that easy it's not that easy it is uh i feel like i will definitely have earned a merit badge by the time i get done with this i don't know exactly what that badge would look like it would probably be a badge stuffed inside a badge wrapped around a third badge to make it work but i am determined that by the end of today I'm going to have all of the fuel cells and all of this construction inside of this, uh, inside of this, and then I'm going to have the last brass pipe put in place. I might even get it painted. Ooh, dare to dream. But uh, nothing to it but to get started on it. Now I have put another coat of white on these. I have uh, put a clear coat over top of it. Because if you've ever touched red and white paint together, you know you're going to get paint scratches and paint transfer and all that kind of stuff. 
here is the central shaft and I've put a, a, a satin coat on that this morning don't worry there's still plenty of there's still plenty of clearance with the things that have to go over top of this so I'm not worried about them scratching the paint but even if they do I am prepared to touch that paint up rather I have to put one tiny touch of paint on a scratch than try to try to paint an entirely raw piece of metal in there I'm gonna have a hard enough time with that with this last brass rod or tube sorry I, I uh, broke my own rule there it's a brass tube it has to go in here yet and I don't dare paint this because it has to slide up through all of these uh, stanchions or these standoffs and I can't do that because that would scrape the paint off plus it would make it too tough to get through all that so that all still has to be dealt with after I've got the uh, after I've got the fuel cells in well there's nothing left to it but to start to put this in and if you start from the rear edge like you are supposed to then the first item that it encounters is a standoff you know that could probably be slid up from the other side let me uh, let me consult the book of armaments and then I'll be right back oh good lord I'm glad I'm done with this or almost done with this portion of the of the building because I have a milestone and that is it's more like a kidney stone at this point a milestone and that is the last brass tube is in place holy freaking Luya. and boy did it take some twisting and some pushing and some bending not as much paint scraping as I was afraid of but uh, when when the, uh, the the kindly makers of this kit caution you that you might have to mask the uh, fuel cells off to paint um, that's an understatement uh, it's, a, it's a wild understatement sort of like uh, the Atlantic Ocean is a little moist because these pipes rub up straight against and you can see the one that's not painted yet uh, they rub up straight against those fuel cells there ain't no way on God's green earth to get any masking between said fuel cells and um, the uh, pipe. So that's going to have to be hand painted and then uh, and then touched up and then, oh, I don't know, just all number, all amounts of spraying is going to have to happen. Um, each one of these, each one of these, I'll bet you, has been broken and reattached more times than I can bore you with the counting of and now now that everything is in and this last pipe is in place I can go ahead and glue the the purposefully broken points of the framework of the girder work back together and I'm gonna go do that now and then I'm gonna go sit on the deck with a cold beer thank you very much and it's only uh, noon no it's not even noon yet I think it's like 1130 all right success always happy to report success uh, all of the girders that were broken intentionally to allow the places there the uh, fuel cells to go in have been repaired the last metal tube is in it has I've started painting it but I have not uh, not gotten nearly as far uh, finished with that but I wanted to go in ahead and uh, glue these back in last thing to do after that will be to touch up any of the white paint that is uh, remaining that got scuffed or scratched or got uh, any sort of red on it I can touch that up now that these are all this is all glued down this is all set I have not put these outside fuel cells on yet because frankly that can wait uh, I do want to put it put those on and then put the whole assembly off to the side with those done in place and that will happen today but uh, the first thing I need to do is I can't touch up and get in around the paint that I need to do that with those big balls in the way so that can those can go on last and then there's a little bit of work that needs to be done on the 
uh, rear antenna. There are some uh, other bits of uh, oh, uh, wiring and tubing to go on those. I have to dig out the instructions. I haven't really paid that much attention to what goes on that uh, antenna because I've kind of been sitting it to the side knowing that it was out on the end that I could work on that at any given point. Uh, putting this aside, I may want to put go ahead and put a uh, uh, an overall flat coat on it after it's done. So let me back up and back up and restate what I want to do. First thing is to do is to sit on the deck with a beer because this has been some nerve-wracking work. Second thing to do is to touch up any white paint that needs to get touched up. Third thing to do is to put the outside balls on. Fourth thing to do is to work on that antenna. And then lastly, the fifth thing to do is to flat coat the whole Megilla and put it aside and start working on another portion, another portion of the uh, Valley Forge. Uh, and probably that will start on Monday. If I can get this area to where I'm completely happy with it today, that will be enough. And enough, if I've learned anything, is enough is enough. Um, this is a good amount of work to have gotten done in only the first week of construction. And I have to think, um, you mark these words, cross your fingers, your toes, your eyes. I have to think the worst is over. I have to think this is as tough as it gets. I have to think that because if I was thinking that I had tougher stuff in, ahead of me, I don't think I would be able to finish. I have to think that this is the, the hardest part of it. Okay, all the balls are in place. Back from lunch, a little bit more rested and, and refreshed. And uh, there we go. That's how she looks from the top with the, the new additions here. Uh, all I need to do is kind of push that one. That one doesn't want to look like it's on center. Kind of push it back in place. That's what happens when these things are snapped so many times and been glued back down is that they're not always uh, back in center. So let me pull that one. Yeah, we're going to may maybe have to brace that up in place before we uh, call it a done thing. And then see what white areas need to be touched up on it still. Even when you think you have caught the last one of them, another one will jump up and say, Hello, how you doing? You missed me. Did you miss me? Yes, you did. You did miss me. So let's see. Yeah, it's very difficult to get to some of these that, uh, oh, I gotta get the magnifying peepers on, but uh, I gotta get some oil on this chair. I'm sorry about that. I am just trying to touch up the areas where the white paint got a little bit of the uh, red overspray on it from where I was trying to touch up the girder work. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing is the uh, balls being glued down as they are, 
they don't rattle around or roll around in your hand while you're trying to paint them and that makes them easier to deal with that's for sure because when they were rolling around or when you were holding on to them with your one hand and painting with your other you could very easily stick your big old thumb right back into fresh paint and that's harder to do now that they are glued down in place so that's a significant uh, improvement okay Oop. yeah now you can flip the whole thing on its side and see which which facets are uh, visible and which ones are not yeah, I don't know how well you can see those, but uh, they'll look they'll look more obvious once they're painted. But there are cross wires on all three of these veins coming out of the rear radar. Now I've got to put some of the photo etch that goes into uh, or goes on top of that uh, radar in place, and I'm always always happy to see a familiar name. And when you look at the photo etch, and you happen to see that little etch by paragraphics, I know my friend Paul worked on this. So I know that the quality on it is going to be just lovely. Now what we need to do is get a series of these discs, these Part D. The discs right here. Oops, right there. I need to uh, cut some of those off and they get attached to the sides of the uh, veins here. Okay, so I just wanted to take a break and work on pieces that had nothing to do with the girder system at all. Just something that was completely different. And so, geez, I gotta get this chair oiled. Sorry about that. Um, so I worked on this bridge piece and putting all of these tiny resin bits into place on the bridge piece. And I was starting to take a look at the other arrays and antennae and things like that that need doing. And the deceptive part about that is on the paper, on the on the page, they look huge. I mean, they look sizable. They look like they'd be easy to work with. And then you get into real life and you take a look at the resin part or you're trying to find a little scrap on the uh, sprue that is the resin part. Or you get into the uh, the very finely uh, printed uh, front antenna and you realize that, uh, yeah, it looks a lot easier to do when you're looking at the sheet of paper than it, sorry, than it is in real life. Um, so I decided to put those things aside and work on something that I thought was at least something I could do with my bare hands without microscopes and atomic... Uh, atomic microscopes and all that kind of stuff at my disposal. So, uh, where are we at now? This is uh, coming up on Friday afternoon, and we are very much uh, at a good stopping place, even though that means I stopped earlier in the day than I normally would. This is a good, uh, a good stopping place, and in fact, a very good stopping place for the week because I got a lot more done when I look back on it than I thought I would get done in a single week. So um, while I believe I will always be touching up the white paint on this, it is something that I could do from today until the day that I die, hopefully many, many years from now. Um, so uh, what we're gonna do is just, we're just gonna uh, close everything down and call it a week. I'm gonna see if one more thing, I wanna see if I can bring all of the parts out here on the table Okay, I'm trying to do something dramatic here to show you the complete breadth and depth and, and uh, all of that of this kit. And uh, I've got the pieces laid out. Now, I've not joined any of those three together because we're rapidly getting to the point where, or the stage where, once this thing goes together, it ain't coming apart. So, uh, this is how I'm going to be working on it. Obviously the domes will be removable, so I can build the domes, work on those separately, and plug them in as we, uh, as we finish them. But the tail end, going from the rear radar, 
all the way up through the fuel cell balls and all the way up to where it sinks into the back of the main module and oh, this is the back of the rear I've got it turned around the wrong way it actually should be if everything is facing forward it should be like that so that will plug into the rear end of that this plugs straight into there and you have a 49 inch ship when you are done so happy am I that I've got the brass structuring part done but the we have the domes yet to do which is kind of like its own separate model and I think next week I'm going to start on the secondary or this middle I'm see I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of building up to the domes because that's the part I'm the least secure about is doing all that landscaping so this part is where I'll be uh, next week and I'll be working on at least starting it's not gonna take me the full week I don't know till I get into it but there's lots of detailing that needs to be done on this there's a whole uh, bridge antenna that needs to be built there um, and there's lots of little detaily bits that need to be addressed here and then working our way up to there so for this is what I got done this week from what started out if you remember go back to the first part of the video and see the uh, pile of brass rod sorry brass tube brass tube get it through my head it's it's hollow it's a tube um, resin parts and brass tubing and 3d printed parts from all of that comes this so not a bad first week <clears throat> and that's gonna bring us to the end of one of week one on the Valley Forge project uh, promise this was going to be a multi-week project it's going to take me quite a while to get through to the rest of this uh, this is as much as I dare pick up and hold in front of the camera so you can get an idea of the scope of this thing or the length of this thing if that's only the front you know front half pretty much um, but uh, of course one of the things you do when you are researching a kit is you go back and look at the source material and while I love the design of the, of the, uh, the Valley Forge, and I love the design of the drones. Although I have a particular fondness for Louie. Hashtag justice for Louie. Um, it's not a very good movie. It's, it's poorly written. It's poorly uh, produced. It looks like a TV movie. It's just, Doug Trumbull, I appreciate everything you've done for the world for lenses and camera work and the advancements in technology stay away from behind the camera stay in the lab stay somewhere else you can't make it you don't make good movies sorry uh the characters are cardboard uh the plot holes are numerous um i'm sorry i was in a little maybe a little bit of a sour mood but it, it's it's one of those things that you just remember it being so much better than it actually was um so until next week when we will be back at work and uh We'll, we'll no doubt get a lot of that center section done, and we might even start on the landscaping. Who knows? Um, until then, be good, be safe, be good to each other, be kind to each other, be patient with each other, uh, be excellent to each other, and uh, we'll see you here next time.